ChatGPT is already being banned in New York school systems, Seattle school systems, Alabama, and Washington DC area school systems. Yet there are some school systems and instructors that are actually encouraging ChatGPT in their classroom. So what exactly is a homeschooling parent supposed to do with this? Because I guarantee if I had access to ChatGPT when I was in high school, I would have used it every single day. In this video, I'm going to do my best to explain what every homeschooling parent needs to know about ChatGPT and how it can affect your homeschooling environment. But first, in case you've never heard of what actually ChatGPT is, let's spend a few minutes discussing it. Throughout the beginning of the video, I'll be showing you examples of just a fraction of what it's actually capable of. Because there's explaining it, which at times can get kind of technical, and then there's just showing you what it can do, and that's quite a bit more fun. For example, look what ChatGPT provides when I ask it to explain a simple joke about Christmas in the form of Jerry Seinfeld. Just looking at the joke structure, the cadence, how it's written, it would be hard to say that that wasn't him who wrote that joke. So what is ChatGPT? The GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It's basically a computer program that can interact with people in a conversational way. And the reality is this isn't anything new. There was GPT-1, 2, and 3, and we're currently on version GPT-3.5. And to understand what makes 3.5 such a breakthrough in artificial intelligence, you have to take a step back in time and look at ChatGPT 3.0. GPT-3 was based fundamentally on 175 billion different parameters. It actually came out about two years ago, and according to programmers, it was quite impressive, but kind of dumb. Which coincidentally during a parent-teacher conference was what my fourth grade English teacher said about me. So to fix that, with 3.5, they started adding different parameters and programs such as codecs. So to avoid getting too technical about codecs, plus is pretty much at the limit of my understanding. What adding codecs did to chat GPT-3 was basically give it the ability to reason. And on top of that, it was fine-tuned even more by human labeling and reinforcement learning. What that means is there was a very large group of people that were analyzing the answers of ChatGPT3 and telling it which answers were more appropriate than the others. So when you combine that human labeling process plus the reinforcement learning program that was already in there, it essentially turned into ChatGPT 3.5, making it instead of quite impressive but dumb, to just quite impressive. ChatGPT 3.5 has been proven to be so smart, it can actually pass the United States Medical Licensing Exam. And I can vouch from first-hand experience that is a ridiculously hard test to pass. Although I do remember doing quite well on it. And the real scary thing is GPT 4.0, which is going to be significantly better than 3.5, is already almost completely finished with its development and will be rolling out fairly soon. So we've discussed what chat GPT 3.5 is. Let's talk about how it's going to affect your homeschooling environment. Whether it's going to have an overall positive effect or negative effect, it's really going to be determined by how you approach it. Let's say you spend an entire week doing a unit on World War One, And at the end of the week, you ask your kids to write a 1,000 word essay say summarizing the events. I get it, that's not the best way to homeschool, but stay with me here. You can see all a person has to do is to type the question in the search bar and in a matter of seconds they are given what would appear to be a well thought out and well written answer to the question. How in the world is a parent going to be able to decipher if that's something their children wrote or if it's something that comes straight out of the computer in just a matter of seconds and their kids really didn't learn anything. Now to discuss the flip side of things and how it can make it easy for educators, you can ask it to provide you 10 multiple choice questions regarding Germany's motives in World War I, or to ask it to give you 10 multiple choice questions on a book you may be reading in a couple of weeks, such as Of Mice and Men. Look what happens when you type that into the program. It gives you in just a matter of seconds, 10 perfectly curated questions regarding the events of the story of Mice and Men. And of course, as an educator, if you don't know the answers, you can just say, hey, can you give me the answer? This is a student's dream. If you're falling behind on assignments, or even if you just don't want to do the assignment, let ChatGPT complete the entire thing for you, and it will be very hard for anybody grading the papers to know the difference. So you can see why school systems across the country are banning this program from their computers. And as I mentioned, in the areas where it's not being banned, most educators are changing their testing format, and a lot of them are going to oral examinations to ensure their students have learned what they're supposed to have learned. And I realize this is probably no different than what math teachers thought when the TI-82 calculator came out. Do you remember how easy it was to cheat with that calculator? Even today, there are websites where you can go to where graduate level students will gladly do your homework for a fee. So the point is, I get it. The ability to cheat was already there before chat GPT-3, and it will continue to be there even beyond. But man, does this program make it easy. So how you incorporate GPT 3.5 into your learning curriculum, or should you ban it altogether? Of course, it's completely up to you. Just consider this entire video an FYI on the program itself, just so you're not caught off guard when your students or your kids try to pull this one off on you. So to close this video, I'm going to ask ChatGPT3 the hardest question in the history of mankind and one that is yet still to be answered and see what it says. OK, 
Apparently it's that simple.